Can anyone imagine making it through an entire day without electricity provided by batteries? What would that be like? We would not be able to call or text our friends using our smartphones. We would not be able to tell time using our watches. We would not be able to start our cars. Our TV remotes, garage door openers, and wireless game controllers all require a battery. Imagine trying to have a conversation with our relatives who are hearing impaired. They would not be able to hear us when we speak to them. We would not be able to regulate an abnormal heartbeat, especially in individuals who are suffering from abnormal arrhythmia using a pacemaker. Unless we want to go back to the mechanical means of cranking our engines to start our cars, winding our watches to tell time, or even winding our pacemakers in order to generate the electrical impulses that are required to start or regulate a slow heartbeat. Almost everything around us is powered by batteries, from consumer electronics to medical devices. Without batteries, our lives will be full of wires. Long extension cords will be required if we need to be mobile. Imagine what a mess that would be. We cannot go very far conveniently. Batteries store chemical energy that can be converted into electricity to power devices. The basic construction of batteries has not changed in over 100 years. And one of our biggest limitations when it comes to our need to be mobile is that batteries are large, heavy, and can only be fashioned into a very few restrictive shapes. And also, once the stored energy, chemical energy, is used up, the battery must be replaced. Another limitation is that they are hard to miniaturize to the micro or even nanoscale, and miniaturization typically requires recharging. Recharging of lithium-ion batteries, for example, requires specialized protocols in order to avoid overcharging, which could lead to hazardous situations such as fires or explosions. If we could only remove batteries from the equation, then all of a sudden we can have truly wearable sensors and implantable sensors. One of my research areas focuses on the implantation of sensors inside the human body. Sensors provide highly accurate, cost-effective, and easy-to-use non-clinical and clinical devices. In a non-clinical setting, sensors can be used to detect pathogens from fresh meat, poultry, or fish, and they can also be used to check the quality of the air we breathe and the water that we drink, such as detecting the lead levels in our water supplies or detecting the toxicity levels of our wastewaters. The most common example of a sensor in a clinical setting is that of the glucose meter. The glucose meter is used on a routine basis by individuals suffering from diabetes to monitor their blood sugar levels. Let's imagine for one second. Let's take this glucose meter and implant it inside of our body so that it can measure our blood sugar levels and transmit that data wirelessly to our smart devices, such as our cell phones. If we could do this, this will enable autonomous monitoring of blood sugar's level that will revolutionize diabetes management. However, the current strategies that we have available to do this still relies on the old concept of implanting the sensor inside the body by mounting the sensor electronics and housing outside of the body. And on top of that, the sensor system contains a rigid and bulky battery. Given the current limitations of batteries, could there be an alternative to powering our devices? Let's go back to the definition of batteries. Batteries store chemical energy that can be converted into electricity to power our devices. In order for us as human beings to function properly, our cells and our bodies require a continuous source of chemical energy. And believe me when I say our bodies are full of stored chemical energy. 
So another example of a battery is me and you. Do you see where I'm going with this? So now we can look at our bodies from this perspective and begin to think of the human body as a battery. For individuals suffering from diabetes, monitoring their blood sugar levels and making sure their blood sugar level is under control is a huge part of their day and it is absolutely critical for their overall health. When blood sugar levels are left on check, this could lead to serious health complications or even death. So individuals with diabetes currently check their blood sugar levels by pricking their finger with a sharp device and using a glucose meter to measure their blood sugar level. However, if we think about it, this finger prick test provides blood sugar level information at one particular point in time. That is not good enough if our goal is to maintain tight control of blood sugar levels. So what we are doing in the bioelectronics laboratory at UMBC is to try something very unique. We are developing devices that are self-powered, meaning that for the very first time, the battery is included, and that battery is you. We are specifically developing a human-powered glucose biosensor. From here on, I will refer to it as the human-powered glucose sensor. This human-powered glucose sensor will be able to measure blood sugar levels continuously, unlike the manual finger prick test, and be completely invisible to the user. Since glucose is abundant in our blood, and we have access to the stored chemical energy, we are tapping into this as a fuel source. So the device we're developing, we envision, will be implanted a few millimeters underneath the skin, and it will be complemented with microelectronic circuits. This microelectronic circuits will enable us to measure blood sugar levels continuously and transmit that data wirelessly to our smart device, whether it's our smartphones. This will enable us to be able to measure blood sugar levels continuously, and by monitoring continuously, individuals with diabetes can regulate their blood sugar levels better and make informed diabetes management decisions that are best for them. Developing this human power glucose sensor is a team effort. There are two parts to the technology. We have the sensor chemistry and material, which involves chemists and chemical engineers. And then we have the microelectronic circuit that enables us to be able to acquire the data, process it, and transmit it to our smart devices. And that involves electrical and computer engineers. In this work, what we are doing is we're using the electrochemical breakdown of glucose to measure blood sugar levels and generate electricity simultaneously to power our devices. In addition to that, if we think about it on the grand spectrum, in the future, not only will we be able to, um, to power devices inside of our body, but also outside of our body because the human body has an infinite source of power. This research that we're doing is supported by the National Science Foundation. And this funding has enabled us to prove that this concept actually works. In general, this human power glucose sensor has far-reaching implications for medical devices. And if we think about all the individuals suffering from the disease, diabetes, especially the children who have to manage this disease, think about how much freedom we are giving them. And to give them that freedom, that is what we are driven to do at the Bioelectronics Laboratory at UMBC. Thank you.